now what i'm going to do is this uh, i'll give you some optimization problems you know some type of optimization problem that we have been solving in this class uh from the beginning okay uh using different different methods okay uh so and then now what we're going to do is we'll we'll uh come up with some more methods through which we can solve those problems okay uh so so the kind of problems that we'll be dealing with uh, are of this type you know one type of problem is basically a problem where there is no constraint okay you're simply going to maximize fxy with respect to xy like for example you know if you want to fit a line through the data uh, you know then then there are two parameters that you want to choose uh, because a line is defined by two parameters one is the slope and the other is the intercept so if you want to fit a line through the data kind of a best fit line then it's 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 you know it's it's some objective you know that you want to minimize uh, uh, by choosing the slope and the intercept so it is a two variable optimization problem where uh, slope can take any value and uh, uh, and the intercept can take any value and again it's an unconstrained optimization you know it's, it's actually a regression problem Okay, so that's one thing, you know, so here we are maximizing FXY, obviously, you know, similarly, you can think about minimizing FXY. Uh, so how do you convert the minimization problem into a maximization problem? Basically, just multiply the objective by minus F, because maximizing uh, minus F is equal to minimizing F, okay? Uh, so, you know, I mean, uh, so even though we have been solving more problems of this type, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't, uh, you should, you, know, you should also know how to solve minimization problem and that's actually easy uh, so you can e either solve it directly or you can convert it into a maximization problem by multiplying the objective by minus one and then solve it whatever solution you're going to get is actually the solution to this minimization problem is that clear <clears throat> okay so this is one type of problem that we're going to look at today okay uh, again uh, today i'll be talking about only functions which are differentiable okay uh in fact twice differentiable most of the times okay uh and then um and then the other type of problem that we'll be looking at is you know where we have equality constraint okay so so you want to maximize with respect to x y uh you know subject to the constraint that uh you know so you have some equality constraint so you can imagine gxy equal to zero okay something like that okay is that fine or if you want you can write c here okay and it doesn't matter okay okay so this is the second type of problem that we're going to look at and the third type of problem that we're going to look at is you know a problem which involves inequality constraints you know the kind of problem that we have seen utility maximization problem expenditure minimization problem they were they were inequality constraints okay sometimes even multiple of them okay uh, so here you know we'll be looking at problem where you're maximizing fxy subject to uh you know uh, uh linear uh, su subject to a single uh, equality constraint you know and then we can also look at a problem of this type where you have you know this maximization problem and then you have this constraint which is gxy is less than or equal to c okay and then you may have some more constraints uh you know you can if you want you can just put one x y is less than or equal to c1 g2 x y is less than or equal to c2 and so on and so forth and if you want you can you know because if you see non-negativity constraints are like that right i mean they are of this type yes x is greater than or equal to zero so x is greater than or equal to zero can be written as minus x is less than or equal to zero right so you can always write it in this form okay uh, so, okay, uh, so basically, you know, there, there can be multiple constraints here. Not necessarily non negative constraints, but it can also be some number here. Okay, it can also be something else. Okay, so we'll be looking at problems of these three types today where F and G are differentiable. Okay, is that fine? Yes, sir. So let's first look at the first type of problem okay for the first type of problem you know uh, the necessary condition for for the optimum is these two conditions
is that fine okay it's an unconstrained optimization problem okay so the necessary condition for the optimum is this okay and sufficient condition is the concavity of f okay so these are the necessary conditions if you just uh you know also have concavity then you know these conditions will also guarantee you that f you know whatever you're going to get is optimal okay whatever you're going to get is a solution to the optimization problem is that okay clear to everyone okay so that's why you know you just have so if you remember you know like it's a similar thing for one variable case right i mean concavity actually helps you uh uh to to you know like just make sure that if you just find the critical point or the point where uh the derivative is zero okay uh and if you also have in in addition concavity then you know it's a guarantee that it's a maximum okay similarly you know for for a minimization problem again these are the necessary conditions okay uh for the optimum and convexity of f will guarantee that the solution to this pop uh, to this system will be the solution to the optimization problem is that okay is that okay <clears throat> is that clear so can you tell it once okay okay so basically you know you have some objective you know you're just going to take the derivative okay let's do one example i think that's going to be clear okay uh, so suppose you're maximizing this okay and you are allowed to choose anywhere any x y okay uh, plus okay suppose you are maximizing this okay now what we're going to do is this in order to solve this problem we can uh, first take the derivative of this partial derivative of this with respect to x so can you tell me what is so so let's call this f x y okay so what is the partial derivative of this with respect to x anybody 4 minus 2x 4 minus 2x very good okay and what is the partial derivative of this with respect to y 4 minus 4y 4 minus 4y now you're going to set them equal to 0 okay right and that's going to give you uh basically you can you can call it critical point or whatever you want okay x is what so what what is x so if you're going to solve the system what are we going to get what is x two yes and what 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 is y one very good okay so this is a critical point you know two comma one is a critical point x is two y is one okay that's a critical point okay now is f concave is this concave function so there are two ways to do it it's a twice differentiable function so you can either you can do the second derivative thing that we just did you know you can check if del 2f by del x2 is negative del 2f by del y2 is negative uh and then del 2f into uh, del 2f by del x2 into del 2f by del y2 is greater than or equal to del 2f by del x del y square you know so these are you know the conditions that you might want to check you know for concavity otherwise you know if you if you just uh, uh use the sum theorem you know you'll get it okay sum and the domain extension theorem because if you see 4x is a linear function so it's a concave function x square is a convex function but minus x square is a concave function so this is a sum of the two concave functions so this is a concave function similarly this is a concave function by domain extension and then some theorem the sum of them is a concave function because the sum of two concave functions so this is indeed a concave function so you can you know either use that approach or this one you know you'll get it you'll get that this is a concave function okay so once you have this as a concave function uh, we know that this is a guaranteed maxima is that clear because now this is a sufficient condition yes or no earlier we know that it is a critical point okay but uh, we didn't know whether it's a maxima or not unless we plot it or 
figure out through concavity you know so we figured it out through concavity because this is a concave function uh, so this is the maximum you know this is where the function achieves the maximum value is that okay this is a solution to the optimization problem Is that clear to everyone? Yes. Okay. Uh, please note that it's the same set of conditions also for minimum, but this is not a minimum. <coughs> the reason is because the function turned out to be concave. Okay. Uh, since the function is concave, so this is uh, not the minimum. Okay. In fact, the minimum doesn't exist. Okay, so if I'll ask you to minimize this, you know, the minima doesn't exist. Okay, so uh, so the, these are the necessary conditions. These are not the sufficient conditions. They'll not guarantee. Okay, the guarantee comes from the concavity. Is that okay? Clear to everyone? Okay. So even to solve the minimization problem, you would have you would have done the same thing. You'd have found the derivative set them equal to zero and you would have got this but the thing is because this function turned out to be concave so this is not the max minimum this is actually a maximum is that clear okay and we are basically solving the maximization problem so we are fine you know this is a solution but if you would have if you would have been solving the same problem but a minimization problem then you know then also you would have got 2 1 but then 2 1 is not the solution okay the reason is 2 1 because this objective is actually a concave objective so uh, so you know you you are basically getting a maximizer not a minimizer so it turns out that in this case the minimizer doesn't exist and this is also very clear why it doesn't exist because if you make this x as big you know really big then this term can be made as small as you please you know the reason is because this is a square term associated with x and there's a negative term outside so clearly you can make this term as small as you please small means as negative as you please okay by choosing the magnitude of x large enough is that okay so no minimizer exists for this problem have you all understood this okay so it's very important to check for concavity convexity is that clear okay good <clears throat> 